Okay, this meeting is being live streamed. So, you, you, turn, you just hit got it. All right, and then that is the Facebook version. So, if you go down to the blue camera on the bottom of the screen. No, I can't, I can't watch the Facebook version because there's too big of a delay. <laughs> I'm watching the Facebook version, and there's this massive delay between you and I. Like, I'm going to get so confused. Oh, man. <laughs> so anyway, you were saying earlier that it's, um, it's cold. Uh, okay, you're up in Boston, right? Yeah, I, I live in Salem, actually, so it's a little bit north of Boston. Now. It's like along the coast, maybe about an hour, not even an hour's drive. But um, I, I can see the window right beyond the screen right here. And it's just this little, little like powdery dusting of snow coming down, which I love when that happens. I love that so much. It's, it's, it's a littlest amount where it's completely innocuous. Even the most hardcore snow haters will mm. be like, oh, and they know it's not gonna like adversely affect them. Um, for me, at least, I, I always say like when I joke about up here, like, my personal motto is uh, feet, not sleet. Because yes. the ladder sucks. No one likes that. But um, like if, if, if we're going to do this, let's do this. You know, right, so right. we had this massive storm right before I left for vacation. And um, if I had missed that, I would have been so pissed off. I'm like, man, come on. Like, you wait for the real stuff to come in. Right, it's like right. two and a half feet. I'm like, ah, ah, ah. That was let's, let's, jump, let's jump back into that. Let's go ahead and get this thing started. Uh, apparently, we got a few right. folks on already. So, um, cool. All right, and hopefully my dog is not going to knock my mics out because she's actually laying on the quarter right now. It's, you know what? This is not a Greybeard Productions unless something like this doesn't happen, right? Anyway, let's get this thing started. Um, everybody, welcome. Uh, good evening. We are a little bit early, but welcome to another episode of Greybeard's Talk To. I am Greybeard, um, and joining me today is this wonderful, good-looking guy on the other side of the screen on Zoom. I don't know if I really need to introduce him because I know all you guys pretty much know him already, but Mr. Nate Silva. How you doing, bud? Hi. <laughs> um, we are going to talk about a lot of different things in a little bit, but before we get too involved in our conversation like we just were, um, let me go ahead and let me get some housekeeping stuff done um, and get this out of the way. Um, some of this information is actually pretty important. So I want to start with the upcoming events that Greybeard Productions has. Uh, we've got two big events this year. One of them is in May, and we are working with part of a Warrior Inc. Uh, mounted archery. These folks are based out of Virginia, and they are actually producing their very first tournament. Um, and the tournament is called Shoot with a Purpose. This is going to be April 2nd and April 1st. We have information on our website, uh, graybeardsbikeandexperience.com. Um, if you need information about that. Now, they are a nonprofit, so they are asking for a $10 donation um, as a kind of an entry fee, which helps them do what they do. Um, and then if you guys want to camp, they actually, there is a campground on the um, fairgrounds, if you will, that they're actually holding this tournament on. So uh, camping is a $15 charge for camp, um, to camp, and that's, that's each night. So, um, Graybeard Productions, um, we will be there Friday night, Saturday night, and then we will be heading out Saturday after the uh, tournament. So we're really excited for those guys. Um, oh, that's what I said, right, Sunday? Oh, my, my bad. We're leaving Sunday. Um, so we got that going on. And then in May, May 21st, May 22nd, we have Graybeard's Life and Experience. We have our big festival, uh, which part of the Warrior is joining us. These guys are going to be coming up. They are going to be doing archery demonstrations, and we are very excited to have them. We also have Highland Game demonstrations going on. Um, and again, this is kind of where this conversation is going to go with Nate, because Nate's going to be joining us as well. So before, like I said, I don't want to go too deep into that. Um, hotel stay. If anybody's looking for a hotel stay, we are working with the Crown Plaza Hotel. Uh, it is four miles from the fairgrounds. It is a legit straight shot. You take a right out of the fairgrounds, and then the next turn is a left into the hotel parking lot. So um, it's a really nice place. Again, graybeardsbikingexperience.com. We have all of the information. There is a promo code. Uh, they have discounted rooms for us. I know it's still a little bit pricey, but this is Annapolis, and everything is expensive in Annapolis. So 
um, they're actually giving us quite the discount and we are very thankful for those guys helping us out. Um, real quickly, vendors, uh, any vendors, I just want to put this out there and get this out there early and kind of get this answer. Uh, set up for the festival is going to be on May 20th. Breakdown can be May 23rd. You do not have to break down on the 22nd. Um, you don't, you can take your time. Monday the 23rd, we will be breaking down. We will be rolling out on Monday. So please um, take your time and, and don't feel like you have to rush out of there. Um, and then the last bit of housekeeping news that I want to cover is Wednesday night. Taryn is now doing her own spot because she's tired of screaming at me from behind the camera. Um, so with her spot, she is doing a vendor spotlight. This week at seven o'clock on Wednesday, Taryn will be talking about the Southern Beekeeper. She, they were with us last year and uh, their products and everything that they do was really, really grand. And um, we're really excited to have them back again. So with all of that being said, let's get back to our awesome guest. Nate, welcome. Thank hey. you so much for joining us. Um, and again, we're going to just jump right into this thing. And the very first question that I want to ask. Okay. Mark Pants. Oh, you're going right for the gut, aren't you? I am. Um, I am. You, you'll never know. No, no. Actually, in contrary, contrary to popular belief, I, I am wearing pants, just for full disclosure, um, or full, um, yeah, full coverage. Really? But, um, <laughs> yeah, no, contrary to popular belief, uh, you know, like, kilt's not my first choice of attire. Uh, one of my favorite things, I just got back from vacation um, uh, down in Fort Lauderdale for like a week and a half, and I got to actually walk about a fair twice, uh, the FLARF, uh, For Florida Renaissance Festival, mm -hmm. in shorts and sandals. Boy, was that delightful. Uh, yes. it just no yeah you know, and just yeah and uh you know and none of the awkward questions like are you wearing pants or are you wearing you, you can see whether i'm wearing pants or not it's pretty, rather cool or what or the underwear question which comes up all the time well when you're I, performing I, you have to wear a skirt you can't really i wear absolutely have to wear something uh, you know you have the people come up and will say like you're wearing underwear i'm like nothing has passed you and they're like well no you have my skirt like what well, you know okay the fact that you know i'm wearing underwear right now is the reason why I'm wearing underwear because I I, I know I know what happens. So I'm just you're welcome. Yes. Well, okay. I I know for thank you, and we'll just leave that that there. Um. So, I um, it, it's we're we're friends on Facebook, and and I don't really interact a lot with Facebook other than than this sort of stuff. Um, because of reasons, mm -hmm. and and that's that's kind of what I do, but. I always see stuff popping up and I see a lot of stuff that you have going on. And I remember the first time I saw one of your posts, you had this baby carrier full of cats. I'm yeah. like, what is going on there? I did. So the question is, what's life like as a cat dad? Oh my God. Um, just, yeah, I'm a dog. I'm a dog dad personally, but yeah. But well, cats. as a dog dad, I'm sure you understand. It's just kind of in terms of being backseat. Yes. All anyone cares about is the freaking cats. And I understand it because they're cute. They're awesome. They're hilarious. They're buttheads. Actually, my, my alarm goes off to feed them. It just says feed buttheads. And my own little personal joke to myself. No, no, they're great. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's, it's good. It's good. And, you know, it's just, I have, you have to set boundaries, you know, no, don't, they don't go in my bedroom. I have a fur free zone, a cloth free zone, um, all that sort of thing. Also, you know, I'd gotten them in 2020, even before 2020 kind of like all erupted the way we all know it did. Uh, my work had gone remote and permanent, which is great. I love that. But, you know, I got them as kids. I got them when they were eight weeks old. And um, I didn't want them getting an unrealistic perspective of my presence, you know, I mean, because if you're there like 24 seven, 24 seven, you know, sleeping on you and then following you, sleeping on you. And and then all of a sudden you go for groceries like oh, he's gone like right, i didn't want right. that so i eight hours every night you're on your own and so it's good for them i think mentally too and actually when i got back from vacation the other day um it took them some re-getting used to me and yeah. my neighbors who were looking after me were saying like we can't wait for you to get back because they're getting a little bit press we think you know they're acting differently and they're they're always affectionate they love everybody but they were saying like i think you're going to be very they're going to be very happy to see you back and they were and right. they've been you know they're sleeping right now which is remarkable well i, I was going to ask where they are because <laughs> I, I had somebody actually make a comment uh in our in our feed 
um, they wanted to know if the buttheads were going to be with you while you and I were going through this. And speaking of buttheads, you saw mine earlier. Careful what you wish for. I'm sure me, yeah, especially me yammering in here. It's only be so long before they start waking up. And once they do wake up, it's going to be, you know. I'm just, I'm, I'm waiting for this. I'm waiting for my microphone cord to get ripped out. So what you don't see is by my feet is my 75 pound Labrador that is completely wrapped up in the microphone cord. Um, and she's laying there and she is content. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this is just going to be a matter of, oh yeah, you get to see my bare feet. I don't, I don't wear shoes. Oh, down go, there it goes. There, there, there she is. Oh yeah, so you asked me if I was wearing pants. I didn't ask you if you were wearing shoes. <laughs> That's a thing I don't like to do. I do not like wearing shoes. <laughs> I, I, if I could get away without wearing shoes, I will not wear shoes. Um, but I will also say this. If for no other reason than socks, okay? Like socks are, are life if you have to wear shoes. And there's only so many you can have in life. So yeah, no, yeah, I get, I I'm right there yeah, with you. So we did this, we did this thing last week and, and uh, I don't know if you saw the video or not, but our friends were with us when we went down to the film in Florida and we were on the beach and our friend Eva, oh God, I love this girl so much. And, and I love her. Husband uh, she's, sports. she's, she's rad. Yeah. I, oh, I enjoy yeah. her. We put her, we almost had this major meltdown in the parking lot of this beach because 45 minutes before we shot this, you know, 30 second or minute and a half shoot we were like oh by the way this is what you need to say and we just went through all of this information and we overloaded her brain and you saw the smoke coming out but we're sitting on the beach and the one thing that i think distracted her was her husband was trying to to literally manhandle my feet and pretend he's like giving me a pedicure and i'm sitting there like oh, God, just please just don't just don't and it was just she's like having this complex and, and i'm like hey i don't care if you mess it up I just don't want this guy down here touching my damn feet. I mean, it's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, everybody has their boundaries. So, so we kind of crossed one right there. Ward, good on you. You know, I, it, it was what it was. So, anyway, let, let's let's move on and get back on track. Um, sure, sure. So, I guess um, one of one of the things I wanted to ask. Um, we met you, and we've known you through the Renaissance community. And so many people mm -hmm. have. So yeah, I'm, I'm assuming the pipes came first, and then you the assume correctly. Came. Yeah. Um, but but did. when when you got into the pipes, I mean, what what first of all, what inspired you to get into the pipes? And secondly, you know, how did you get into that rent fair scene? It's, uh, it's actually, it's really funny you ask in that manner too. Um, cause it's all really tied together and it's just one of those things where like, you know, the things you never planned on, you know, I mean, did you ever, you know, you decide to take a bagpipes or, or your dad asked you if you want to take a bagpipes at 12 years old, did you picture several years later, be spinning around and doing all kinds of stupid crap? I said, no, you don't, you don't picture right. that. It just happens. Um, so yeah, so what ended up happening was, um, you know, the try to give you the spark notes version as best I can. Um, I, I always liked them when I was little, um, you know, I, when I, what, whatever rare opportunity, maybe I was part of it. You, you almost never get to hear them. You know, at least I didn't when I was a kid. So, um, and of course I have like these like things showing up on my screen and getting in my way. Um, so yeah, I, you almost never get to see them. And it was, so whenever you do get to see or hear them, like my earliest memory of hearing them was this, uh, old Disney movie with Angela Lansbury who's the chick from uh, murder. She wrote. Uh, there's a movie called Bedknobs and Broomsticks. And in little snippets here and there in that movie, there's bagpipes. And I remember my mother like screaming at me because she'd come in the living rooms and watching that movie for the gajillionth time. And I try to rewind the, the bagpipe parts because you know they're always short. I always liked them. They're, they sounded cool. So you had to wrap a tape, Nathaniel, which is my, my so, family so let, name. Let me pause it right there. Let me pause it right yep. there. Like that. Keep, keep your thought. But yep. um, for the younger generation that is watching, when we say rewind, we had a oh. big box that had this uh, film in it, and you had yep. to actually press a button to rewind it. There wasn't a touch screen where you can just drag it back. No, you had to press. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. I'm sorry. Just yeah. And so that, that tape, that, that tape, it, you can only rewind it so often, apparently. I, I, my mother was always claiming that I'd ruin the tape if I kept re, you know, rewinding over the same part again and again and again and again. Uh, so anyways, that, 
that was all I ever got to hear of the things, but they always sounded cool. I never really thought about playing them, but I just, I always liked them. Fast forward like uh, several, I, mean, I think I was probably like 10 or 11. My parents took me on a vacation to Prince Edward Island in Canada, which is PEI for short. Um, and it's in the Canadian Maritimes, a lot of Scottish immigrants from around there, there in Nova Scotia, what have you. So we went up there. And there's a piping school there as well. Um, and so I'm assuming affiliated with that, some guy was given some kind of a uh, Harborside concert. It was just like a little impromptu thing, maybe like 25, 30 people gathered, you know, among them us. And never being the shy one, I went right up there in front of all for the world to see, jumping around, bouncing around every time he's playing a tune. According to my dad, some person goes up to him whilst I'm doing all this and just says, is that your kid over there? And he says, yes. And he tells them, this is all according to my dad, he goes, that kid's bitten, you got to give him a set of bagpipes. And that, my, that was the first time my dad ever thought about like the feasibility or like just the notion of me playing, but he kind of cast it off initially, well, where, where do you find someone to teach him? And like, that's like, that's really going to happen. But he, it was still in the back of his mind here and there. And then a year or two later, you now he always did music stuff on his own here and there to his own fancy and whims. Um, he always went in and out playing fiddle and stuff like that. So I think he was in there for some reason like that with a music store. He's at the counter doing God knows what uh, at the counter. I'm just meandering around the store, entertaining myself, looking at various things. And I guess he's talking to the guy at the counter. He sees there at the counter a beginner bagpiper kit. So it came with was a practice channel, which is with this thing here. It's like you start playing bagpipes with a thing like this. It looks like a snake charmer. <laughs> It sounds like a snake charmer, but what it does is just you can get your fingering going on something cheap and little for a while, and then it's like a it's like the gateway drug to bagpipes basically. So it had that in the box, and it had a little <laughs> had a little booklet, and I think maybe a tape or something that had like some exercises and stuff. And so my dad sees this, tells the guy, he says, "I totally get this from my kid. He loves bagpipes, but if someone can't teach him, it's just not it's not going to happen." And the guy goes. Whoa, and he grabs a box of, uh, you know, assorted business cards, goes rummaging through, and he says, this guy came in here a while back saying, if anyone ever asked about bagpipe lessons, if you wouldn't mind giving them my card. So he just goes, here you go. <laughs> and my wow. dad just says, I guess I'm out of excuses. He goes up to me out of nowhere. I think I was 12. And he just says, hey, you want to learn how to play the bagpipes? And I'm like, all right. <laughs> so, it's like every, every other 12-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sand, dirt bike, you know, backpipe, same thing. <laughs> so uh, the guy was, yeah, it was about maybe a half an hour drive away or something. He got me started. Uh, and um, he, uh, his name was Eric, the teacher. He, when he was a kid, he went to a, like a bagpipe summer camp. Well, it's not just bagpipes either. They have, it was called the Gaelic College. It's still around now. Uh, they tend to give it the Gaelic name, Costa and the Gaelic uh, or something like that. But I uh, never did the Gaelic very much um justice but called the Gillette college and they have everything they have bagpipes and um you know drumming to go with it you know and highland dance which i like the highland dancers those were good um and cape breton it's in cape breton nova scotia so they have cape breton step dance and fiddle and even like um celtic you know weavings you can make tartans and gaelic language of course they had like everything anything you can think about as celtic they probably had something about it there um, and they had summer camp for kids. They have it for adults too. And July, I guess, was um, kids month. They would have two two week sessions in July. I went to the first one the first year. I went up there. When I was twelve. And um, when I found out there's a whole second session right afterwards, so you would have a whole month of July and just you know uh, Celtic you know goodiness land. I'm like, I called up like, God, I don't have to come home. It's two more weeks. They, they they hadn't paid for it yet. And they said, we'll keep it in mind for next year. Every year after that, I went for the entire month. Um, and this is how what segues into kind of how it got me in a rent fair, but way ahead of time. I think I'd been to Gaelic College. Maybe it was my second or third year. It might have been my second year because uh, it would have been my first year attending the entire two weeks, excuse me, two, two sessions, two week sessions. So the whole month, the weekend between the two sessions um it's, it's almost no one's there you know either the uh, kids are off at the highland games or something like that or they've gone home for the weekend and come back for the second session so I'm, I'm one of like maybe two or three people on the whole campus on that weekend and then one of the house parents comes up to me and says because you board up there you know obviously 
Um, they said, they, you know, we've got these kids coming in from Alabama. Um, could you just please kindly see them to their rooms? And I said, sure. And one of those kids ended up being Mike McNutt, who is my um, other Piper I usually, usually yes. play with, with Kudu. We just, you know, biggest bagpiper doesn't step on littlest bagpiper, instant friends. It just works out. And um, <laughs> yeah, we we stayed in touch over the years and just it, you know, we took we took to each other well. He put up with me, which is, you know, a testament to his patience. And um, and yeah, it's, uh, we always stayed in touch uh, as, as years went on, years went on. When we got to college years, he started getting interested in the Ren Faire thing. He started playing with this group called Tartanic. That's how he met. Uh, the other members of Kudu when they started uh -huh. that up. And then as Kudu got going, they started pulling me reluctantly as I was into, you know, filling in on stuff. Right. Uh, it was hard to get me to do anything because uh, I, I, even for an energetic guy or whatever, and I you have all kinds of crazy ideas, but I'm not the most ambitious person. So it, oh, there's a festival, play blah, blah, blah. So do you, like, how many weekends? Right. And I'm like, no, and <laughs> so it wasn't my idea, but it, they got me to do it and I, I enjoyed myself and, and just one thing leads to another and just keep on going. It was fun. It was good. So that's, that's, that's kind of like the weird disjointed way I got kind of like pulled into all this crap that wasn't my idea in the first place. But you know, things just, the cats weren't my idea in the first place. They worked out great. So right, right, right. <laughs> things work out. Things work out for a reason. So how many states have you actually traveled to? I mean, have you traveled to anywhere? I, I know this isn't anything that I, I've written down for you, but um, just no, no, I'm sorry. Is, is, is there anywhere that you anywhere that you've traveled to that maybe you thought, well, I'm probably not going to get out there. Like I had no ambition of getting out there, but because of the Ren Faire scene that you've actually ended up somewhere that you kind of like thought, huh, okay, cool. I'm here. Never thought I would be, but yeah. Uh, I finally saw the West Coast for the first time in my entire life. Uh, we uh, were hired to do a weekend in Lake Tahoe, of all places. It was just a weekend. And boy, was that one heck of a weekend. I'm not going to get into it. But uh, so just time change and being, I tried everything to try and like get myself to go to bed at like seven o'clock in the morning, you know, and, and instead of whatever else to try and not have myself be it didn't matter no matter what i tried i was still jet lagged and everything else but that was cool you know i mean to be because i had never just the way the go i mean i've been all kinds of places um in my years but i had never been to the west coast I, had, I my parents had taken me to a vacation when i think when i was 15 to sedona for a few days and that was the farthest west i'd ever been until the tahoe thing came up and i at least got to see the west coast ever so briefly because even though we were going to tahoe it wasn't all the way to the coast proper mm -hmm. Uh, I think the flight there was LAX, and so I laid over there for a couple of hours, almost lost my bagpipes because I wasn't thinking of what I was doing, <laughs> got them back right before the plane. <laughs> this was quite the trip, and then get to Tahoe, and then and then the flight back was, uh, yeah, things, things, some of my finer moments, woo! <laughs> and then uh, also Discovery, I got to tell you right now, um, I maintain any detox centers or like a rehab programs they should all be in high elevation because just like i, I couldn't even finish a beer and i was uh, the, the world was spinning like elevation wow. really hit me hard and the pipes uh -huh. nothing worked nothing i had like 15 reads with me they're all like this <laughs> because the air the air thickness is different and right. that matters wow <laughs> well, I'm not to swear. I think about what's happening there. I was like, "Don't swear! Don't swear! Don't swear!" <laughs> yeah, it's, that was that was tough. That was really really tough. Um, so but you know, but fun. You live to learn, right? Oh, so yeah. that, that, that somehow live. Learn in in many instances, in that trip, many instances, live that, and learn. That, somehow, live and learn. It was fun. It was, it was a lot of yeah. yeah I, I remember being there and thinking like. Of all places you would think you might go, this is not where I would have thought that one. <laughs> would have been. Uh, Florida, I mean, I had never been to Florida until doing these gigs, and now it's been a regular destination for me. Yeah. Yeah. So. I, for, for me, the, the, the Florida thing, I have uh, in-laws that live in Florida. So my uh, when I was a kid, I, I took a school trip, and um, um, the private school I went to, we went to, and we did that whole NASA thing. That, that was cool. And uh, I was in, like, seventh yeah. grade. I'm like, all right, this is awesome. I'm good. It was cool, but I'm good. I don't need to come back. 
And then Taryn and I get hooked up. We get married, and then her mom and dad live down there. And this, oh, okay, sure, we'll go see him. Another fifteen-hour drive. Great, love you, bye. You know, so um, now being down there last weekend was 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 grand because we were actually doing some fun stuff. Not that I don't have fun with my in-laws. I love my in-laws. Don't get me wrong, but they are my in-laws. Um, so yeah. So um, and I'm I'm totally getting off track here. That's all right. So I specialize you, in that, so it's, uh, you just blame me. <laughs> I should be used to this because this this is how all my stuff goes. Uh, there there was a couple things I did not mention that I did want to backtrack and, and mention. Uh, everybody who is watching, please sure. drop us dro- drop us something. Um, drop drop a thumbs up. Drop a heart. Drop something. Drop drop a hello. Drop hi. Uh, so that way we know that you're on. Um, okay. So Taryn Taryn says that we need words to know that you guys are on, but also. Um, I have, yeah, I'm, I'm doing a squirrel thing, but I, I only have so many questions that um, I actually prepared for Nate and I to talk about because um, as we talked earlier in the week, you love to hear yourself talk. I love to hear myself talk. We could probably sit here like, you know, for hours and hours, um, but we try to keep it within the 60 minutes. So I purposefully yeah. kept my questions short because we want people that are paying attention and watching us to actually ask me some questions and interact with you. Um, so with sure. that being said, we can get back on track and I'll, I'll just throw it to Taryn because I know she has been writing a couple things down. Oh, you... He's been answering them <laughs> as they've been coming through. As oh, that's pretty know. slick. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty slick. All right. All right. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as you've been talking, you've been answering questions because I will take that one off, okay? <laughs> so one of my, one of the questions I was going to ask, ask you is, um, and I think you might've just answered it, it it's what what has been the most difficult event that you've actually had to play through, you know, weather wise, emotions, um, you know, equipment failures, you know, what has been the most difficult, you know, thing that you've had to like, just kind of like take that deep breath, say, this is going to happen. We're going to man up and we're just going to get this done. Yeah. uh, I mean, it can be be all manner of things. Like, so, you know, let's say like bad weather, for example, obviously that can like, you know, that's, that's one example, um, you know, we're just not necessarily the weather, but the elevation was just wrecking havoc that ranks up there. Uh, if I were to think about situations like that, um, um, I would definitely say er, very early in my piping life, um, it probably was about like maybe 15 or 16. And, uh, I, for ever so brief amount of time, I was, um, part of this band called Tolikard. They actually, they became quite a deal pipe band wise in this region um, for a long time. And they, and like a lot of like the, the really profound level pipers in this region, a lot of them played in that group at some time or another. I missed most of them. So I don't include mine myself with that, by the way. It's just that before I ended up ducking out, I mean, I, they were, the thing is they were really serious about the music. And I mean, I'm really serious. Blah, 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 blah. Let's try this again. I am barely serious about anything now, let alone when I was 15, 16. So I know that my, my so-called priorities were just non-existent and they actually like, they wanted to focus. They wanted to get, you know, they wanted certain like levels and big competitions they wanted to go to. I couldn't give two squats. I, I still kind of can't. When it comes to competition, I've never been a very competitive guy. I've done it. I do, I do do it, but it's not what, it's not my bread and butter. Like I feel like a lot of other folks, it is for them each their own that's great anyways so in the earliest days of telecar they were first getting going and a lot of bands they'll do things like parades and stuff in the region they they usually pay pretty decently you just get a bunch of people walk down the road get your money and then go you know it's a good thing to do for bands um some of them are easier than others and this particular one it was a first night parade in boston and uh i mean there are some cold years there are some mild years this was not a mild year and i don't know what it's about like christmas to new year's so often i feel like it's like bath weather or at least like bath swimming weather in i mean christmas and then five five six days later you get new year's and the temperature just plummets almost right away and this is definitely one of those years the at the ambient temperature was definitely single digits the wind chill was well below zero and we just had to soldier through and it just you can't feel your fingers your pipes don't work right i actually but by the next day i i was trying to just play on my own and i'm i literally felt air hitting my cheek 
And so the big drone that goes on your side here is called a bass uh -huh. drone. So I look, and I couldn't get in tune either, and I could feel like air. I'm like, what is this? I look down, there's giant cracks going down. Cause oh, it just, no. the wood doesn't like extreme, extreme things. If you wouldn't leave your baby somewhere, don't leave your backpacks there either. Don't play it there either. So if you wouldn't play your baby in this weather, don't play your backpacks <laughs> is the idea. And the reason why I bring it up too, I was having enough trouble as it was and um you know couldn't feel my fingers and you know definitely I, I if i didn't get i don't think i got a frostbite by some miracle but um at some point where we play through a set whatever way we could and we're not sounding that great because nothing sounds great in weather like that right. we stop the drummers are wearing gloves they're doing like a little bit of a fanfare give us a bit of a break and we're like warming our fingers and so because we had that break like maybe two or three minutes uh the guy who leads the band's called the pipe major he calls the next tune we all strike up we go what you do is you strike you hear a drone sound you tuck under and then you blow harder and you get the loud part the chanter to come in that's the part you do the fingering on so the drones come first so the e part is the chanter so you, again that's like the second step right so you tuck you get you know drones going blow harder nothing happens i'm blowing like you wouldn't believe trying to get anything no sounds coming out and what you do you, in the inside this is different kind of read but it's the same design this is double bladed thing that faces each other this is the practice channel but it's these two blades that face each other okay. i gotta look at my read they lit they literally froze together I was in those yeah so as a solid block funny thing so the next day once it melted it was the best sounding read I ever had for like three days and it died. But so <laughs> a pinch, I guess, if you need a really good read, just freeze into a block, melts it, it'll be good for two days and it dies. Um, that was really hard. That was extremely extreme. So any, any extreme scenario like that, those are the things that make it really difficult. Um, and then maybe other areas like emotionally, what definitely stands out in my mind that was one of the toughest things I ever had to do was, um, you know, yeah, family member dies, you play bagpipes, I guess it's par for the course, they're going to ask you to play at it. And um, uh, so when my paternal grandmother passed in particular, I just the way it worked out family wise, I wouldn't really see my paternal family all that often, like we always ended up with do most of our holidays with my paternal mother's uh, my, maternal, my maternal mother. At my mother's side of the family. So, right. um, so when it comes to my dad's side, I just we wouldn't see him as often. And I, I knew she loved me playing the bagpipes, and I just I would hardly ever get to play for her, just because just the way things work out, just mm -hmm. see each other. So then she passes away, and now of course they they really want to be playing Amazing Grace at her graveside, and I just I couldn't help these thoughts rushing me as I'm playing. I'm like, well, this is a little late, isn't it? No pun intended. You little sh thinker. You know, so I, right. I have all these guilt feelings and grief combined by the time, by the time it's getting near the end, I just, I, I literally broke down, you know, right. so going from playing, I just somehow got to the end of Amazing Grace and just, I, I back, I like, fell from my hands and I, onto my knees and I'm bawling, bawling out, bawling. Yeah. you know, it, it's, yeah, that was really hard, really, really hard. I somehow kind of got through it. And then you get other weird stuff like um, something fails or something breaks. Yeah. Um, the most profound area I can possibly think of for that, which I'm sure you get a kick of, and I'll try to give you the spark notes of this. Um, um, I don't know if you're familiar with Spatwood Fairy Festival. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So awesome event. Uh, it's not been going. It's, I think the people who ran it kind of got a little bit just wiped out or whatever. So it's not been running the last several years. I think other things have kind of popped up here and there at different times of year, but definitely one of the more magical events um, we've ever, uh, well, like we uh, being Kudu when I was with Kudu, mm -hmm. or just I've ever been a part of, uh, was definitely one of those. It's just one of those magical weekends in so many different ways. Uh, this was still magical, but just uh, memorable in a different manner. Um, so it was a bit of a rainy weekend, and the whole thing is set on a grassy hill. At least our stage, anyways, was on a grassy hill, kind of come down, like a, kind of like a natural amphitheater, which kind of adds to the atmosphere, which is great. Except it's, it can be a little slippery, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I'm not the smartest of folks at times here, it seems. And this is definitely one of my finer moments. 
where uh so one of my favorite sets that uh we would play was they would call the punk set and so it's a bunch of like uh dropkick murphy and flogging molly tunes all jumping uh-huh. together and they're they're very high energy and i'll do all these goofy things with it just it just fits the the tenor of the tunes and um and so that weekend for some reason you know, you know just pure brilliance is you know, people don't know the brilliance people don't know the burden that that it just is tough know. I, did, I know right uh, right <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's the reason it's a re- it's, it's you gotta be short for a reason that's it <laughs> it's just weighing me down um yeah so this is one of those formative moments in my life so i decided to in all my brilliance jump down from the stage and just run around there's a couple like really cute kids they're like running around the crowd, so I would go chase them. So I'd jump in the middle of this punk set they were playing. I would jump down playing, and chase these poor unsuspecting youths around. Did that all weekend with no problems, no repercussions whatsoever. And it's the, it's the last set of the, of the weekend. And I'm doing it all again. And I'm sure it's been remarkable. It's been a miracle that nothing bad has happened up until now. So I go to get back on stage. I run up the stage. And it's just, you know, just a little bit of a jump to get onto the stage from the ground there. But again, the ground's a little bit wet and slippery. So I go, I get on one foot to do the jump up. And all you can see it in slow motion. The bottom foot goes out. Both feet go up in kilt. Bam! (laughs) Picture the two feet sticking up there at the foot of the stage. They're still playing. How they hadn't, like, stopped and started laughing at me yet. It was a miracle it, it was to come um so i go to get up and i i just try to capitalize on whatever moment i can and it's so ruckus they're still playing so i get up and i just you know trying to revel in the moment i just go with my pipes in, the, in my hand and i go Woo! and people <laughs> cheer then then i heard mike on stage like back off pressure because he was probably laughing i thought he just thought that was funny that's that's not why he was laughing uh, so I go around the stage the real way, and I and I already this, is, this works out well. I already described to you the process of kind of like getting the pipes going. You do this like strike thing, the drones go, you tuck, put your hand in the bottom, blow harder, and the chanter goes right. So that's so it's strike, tuck, blow hard, you know, hand on bottom, and then blow harder. It's like it's like a four step process thing, right? So I'm gonna articulate it one more time: strike, tuck, hand on bottom, blow harder and then go all right the hand on bottom part is the key bit here so i get on stage i do the strike i do the tuck my bottom hand goes whoop because the bottom of the chancer was not there that's why mike was laughing what ended up happening right behind me i couldn't see it one of the girls who was selling the cds she Uh picks up the bottom of the chanter i guess what must have happened my like my derriere that's a polite way to put it, I suppose. Polite way to put it. Lands on the chanter, busts it in half, right where the halfway point is. And so I get up, do the woo-hoo thing right behind me. I didn't even see it. See the CD girl, I grab it, and she's like, Nate, you forgot something, you forgot something. <laughs> it didn't matter if I forgot it or not. This was not gonna work. So now I looked, I just I like what I look down, I just see like splinters right below where the finger is. It was just low enough where it was right below where I would have felt it. And then I'm done now. And, I, and then I look down, I see the, the girl's hand, hand waving the bottom of the chanter to me, and she hands to me, I look at it, and I finally put two and two together and realize it actually adds up to four. And I'm like, what else can you do? I just go, woo! <laughs> and then they stopped. I, I think I give the two halves the chancer away to people there at the fest, at, at the at the festival. And oh so that God. was definitely that's hard to forget when you just your butt just blasts the chancer and just destroys the thing. <laughs> I mean, p- pipers have these things break all the time. Chant wood chanters in particular, which that's what I had. I had a wood chanter. Uh, it's been plastic ever since. Um, but um, <laughs> usually it busts on top because it gets skinny on top. What people do, if they can't get it out correctly, they just they go to the bottom and go like this. And what's going to happen? It just splits right at the thinnest part. Um, so, yeah, I didn't do that to this day, knock on wood. But, uh, yeah, so those are the ones that stick out in my mind as, uh, as the more um, – difficult <laughs> well I, I guess the next question is if that was one of the the, the worst craziest things um what's what's the best 
I mean, what's what, what have you done that you've walked away from going, wow, I will never forget this. This was so epic that I'm just never going to forget this as long as I live. You know, so you sent me some like spark notes to how it helped me prepare, which is very kind of you. And I saw that when, um, and I, I got to tell you, of all the things you sent me in my way to kind of just be like mildly prepared for, that was the one that gave me the most pause because I, it's a good problem to have where I can sit there and be like, man, if I were to pick like one thing that's just like amazing or incredible, I think two things probably come to mind. One's very simple and one's a little bit more involved, which again, I'll try to give you the spark notes version if no other reason than time. Um, so number one, and again, I did seriously think about this very, very concertedly. Um, my first weekend ever performing at the Maryland Renaissance Festival. And just, it's just the way that things lined up, the way they went, you know, because I told you kind of how I was reluctantly sort of pulled right. along into the doing this run fair thing with the guys and they're like, well, you're going to help us out. Blah, blah. Finally convinced me to do it. It wasn't my idea. And I, I, I never regretted it, but again, it wasn't my idea. And it was definitely for a long time. It was really more their thing than mine. And I was happy to be mm -hmm. along for it. It was cool, but no, it never really blew my hair back all that much, you know? Um, so until I got to Maryland, I think the way it works out, I'm not going to name the place, but we were at another festival right before it mm -hmm. wasn't the best way I've ever been to it. So that's all I'll say about it. You okay. know what I mean? It's just, yeah, everything's different. Everything's whatever. This one was not so astounding. And so you go from that, the very next weekend is my first time ever at Maryland. Even just getting on site in the morning, I, I'm kind of walking around and I've got like echoes in my head of the guys all these years talking about this fair and that fair, this one's awesome, this whatever. And all of them, for the most part, I mean, a lot of them were cool and fun, but again, nothing really went poof. Just getting on site there and before even things open, I'm looking around, I was like, oh, I get it now. I, this, there's a reason why they brag about this place because wow. And then the crowd. The very first show, I mean, a lot of like the stupid antics I do on stage, a lot of it was kind of born from having some fairs that are just more difficult to have crowds react to things. And so she's trying to get them to do something. <laughs> <laughs> Anything, you know, like right, that's right. what a lot of that community came from, you know what I mean? Or just, yeah, it's just a lot of that was from that. And so just all this effort to get anything i was really used to that especially the prior one you know the one from week before mm -hmm. so i got a stage and it's just dumbfounded by how many people there for the first set it's like it had to be like 250 300 people at least it was the very very first one and I just for the heck of it i put my hand up the whole everyone's like Roar! like whoa so i'm like that, that was that was easy <laughs> yeah, it, was a, it was a staples commercial for crying out loud i'm like wow that's hard to that's hard to forget that was that really stuck to me and um i've said over the years i mean no one wants to choose favorites but if you know gun in my head choose a favorite fair um permanent site fair maryland's definitely takes the cake mm -hmm. um and then i would say you know because they're all so different like when it comes to a tent fair, like a, a non-permanent site, I'd say the Florida Renaissance Festival, um, just the people who run it, and then it's the people mm -hmm. that go, it's, it's rowdy, as you wouldn't believe, which yeah. is kind of up my alley. Really enjoy that. So just, yeah, again, and, and every festival has its own perks. Uh, well, you know, I'm glad you said that. All these charms, everything else. Yeah, so that, so that, sorry, go ahead. No, that's okay. So for Taryn and I, I mean, this is uh, Graybeard's Viking experience. Um, this is our, our, our second year doing this. And for, for her and I to, to have you be able to come down and, and help us out, it's just yeah. blown us away. And, oh, you know, yeah. trying to be professional and trying to get all this set up and everything. <laughs> the thing that we're doing, and in the back of my head, I'm sitting there fanboying. But what, what I did want to, to, to relate to you, and, and I seriously doubt you will ever, ever remember this because you, you do this stuff all the time and it's been great. Um, well, and I'm, I'm a moron, so just keep that in mind. <laughs> we get along perfectly. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I, I remember we've been taking um, our kids to Maryland. I am going to tell them to take story. So my, my, my boy, um, who is now my height at 14 years old with a size 13 <laughs> foot. I mean, the kid's a monster. He's a freaking <laughs> ogre. Um, but when he was, when he was little... 
um, I think we're going back maybe about five years. Yeah, it was probably about it was about nine or ten years old, and we were watching you guys, and he loved you guys so much. But I had taken him, and we had done this little rock thing that they have in, in Maryland. So he like got all these gemstones and these rocks, and he's really really excited about it. And we were all standing over by the dragon, and Taryn and I are doing what we're doing, and then we turn around, we see Jake, and there he is. He's standing there with you, and and it's just one of the one of the the high top tables outside, and you're so like involved with his little conversation and he's all anything he's doing is showing you these little rocks that he's so proud of and you were just like so genuine with him that i was like that dude is fantastic you know oh, and, and that's nice. one of the best memories that that taryn and i have of you it's just this interaction with this little boy that was just so excited because he just got these rocks and he's like showing them off to you and you're like that is really neat that is really really cool and and then well, you know you entertained him for like thirty seconds a minute or something like that and then he like squirreled and ran away and then you went about <laughs> you know that was he great had enough. for us you know that's great and and now that we have our own festival those are the things that um you know we 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 strive for and we try to hope for those things so I know last year we we reached out to you last year Lo, Logan and Rowan hmm. you know reached out on yeah. our behalf and and you were busy and things were going on. Um, and, and totally respect that. But what you did for, again, this is how great of an individual you are and how much we yeah. respect you. You didn't just like, like, Hey, first year fair. I have no idea what any of this is. Screw you people. I'm done. You know, don't, don't bug me. No, no, no. It wasn't like that at all. You were like, Oh, Hey, I'm sorry. I can't make it. But Hey, I know this other guy. You might want to look him up. Yeah. And then we looked him up and now everybody knows Sean and we don't know him as Sean. We know him as Shawnee because he's just got himself <laughs> absorbed into our world. And it was such a great find. And again, I thank you for, for, sure. for, for that because it, it, it's, we, we actually talk every now and then. So, I mean, it's one of those things where there's a, a friendship that's developed um, around something that, that's great. And then we had this Irishman that, that you'll, you'll meet him eventually. Um, okay. I don't know. He was on a small TV show, you know, Game of Thrones. Um, but but we'll we'll go into that cool. later, right? <laughs> um, dude's got a melon like this, you know, his his head's so freaking big. But anyway, I'm sure he's gonna love it. But but what what, what did what did Patty do? Patty, when we when we filmed um, the interview with Sean last year, we were talking about this earlier. Um, we went out on location and Sean played and Patty got to hear him play and Patty immediately went, I need you to play me the Lonely Boatman. Right, that's my question. And, he just asked if you and, play and Sean, <laughs> as great as Sean is, Sean goes, let me look it up. And then at our festival last year, Sean sat there with the tin whistle and Michelle Mountain playing the harp and we had this little private five minute you know, intimate thing where Sean and Michelle played the Lonely Boatman just like for us. Nice. And, and that, that, that was all because of you. I mean, and, and I can't, I, again, I can't thank you enough. But then I, I'm this, glad. Year, this year to turn around and you're like, oh yeah, I'm available. I'll be now. I'm like, okay, <laughs> mine is blown because now not only, so I told you what Sean did. Sean walked the grounds, you know. It, yeah. I'm hoping it's not as hot. I'm hoping that we have sunny, beautiful weather. Last year was 95 degrees. That that young man went home as red as as a lobster, um, and we kept telling him to put sunscreen on. But you know, young guys. Um, yeah, you don't, you don't listen. Yeah, uh, yeah so I got a feeling we're gonna be telling you the same thing. Put sunscreen on. Um, but oh, I, I will. Because I also I love the heat. So if I get my wish, you're gonna be upset. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it, it for for us as long as it's not raining that, that's yeah cool. exactly exactly we, we just exactly. don't want it to rain um yeah. you know but but other than that you know so you're 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 coming and i just see two very high energy people two yeah. very high energy individuals that 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 kind of do the squirrel thing as much as i do and then you two are just going to be there playing the pipes and and again i already told you there is no stage for you this is just going to be whenever you're going to mind up playing, just going to like walk around and play, yeah. and which leads me to a question for you. Am I going to have to get yeah. for you? 
I mean, are we going to have to like do this whole red carpet thing for you and have security guards and then have to, nope, 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 nope. Mr. Silva's over here. You're over there. <laughs> so, because you have to let me know now because I've got to figure out how to get the funding for that. If I got to do GoFundMe or something like that, I will. But we'll get you taken care of. I just need to know. <laughs> no, red carpet, most certainly not required. You know, and uh, yeah, and just you got to watch it with that because yeah, I am little. My head gets too big. I get top heavy. I fall over. It's, it gets really ugly fast. So now, um, yeah, I'm glad. I, I'm really glad you brought up Sean. Uh, I I can't stress this enough. When Rowan and Lo were asking me about it, or at least asking if I, you know, knew what could be good for it, Sean immediately came to mind. I mean, proximity wise, it just works out. I mean, cause he's, he's a reasonable distance away. I mean, I mean I'm sure where he lives right now, but yeah. Yeah, West Virginia, I believe. Yes. But, you know, it's, it's, just, it's not, you know, six states away is, is proximity is a good thing. Right. And just when it comes to just someone who's just cool, easygoing, good to, to work with, get along with, I know that's him. I know that's him to a T. And so it, it just, that's the stuff that I would keep in mind because there are plenty of people who are, excellent players who maybe I might want to suggest them, but I might say, well, how easy I had to work with and so on and so on. I do try to keep those things in mind. And everyone, again, everyone has their virtues. Everyone has their qualities. Everyone's different. Um, there are other people I probably would have thought of as well, but absolutely the first person came to mind. I thought it would be really cool if you could do it for you guys. What's yeah. Sean? So um, my, the event that we're doing in April for the yeah. um, um, mounted archery, uh -huh. um, He's he's coming down. He's going to play with us. So he'll nice. he'll be he'll be camping with us again in in, in April, uh, and then he'll be back with us in May when when you're there. Yeah. So um, yeah. you know, again, I called him up about April, and he's like, "Let me check the date." Yep, I'm good. Uh, what are we doing? You know, I'm like, yeah. do, "Do you want a contract? You want to talk money?" Oh no 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 no! You're going to be there. I'm going to be there. I'm like, I'm going to going to pay you, dude. I mean, you don't have to do everything for free now. I mean, come on, you know. So. Um, but that just that just kind of speaks to him and about how great he is. So absolutely, no, so yeah, I know Terrence. Uh, Terrence been laughing her rear end off. Yeah, yeah. So Shawnee said he just won't down. He just won't hold down any hills. Like yes. It, so there's I a whole backstory get, down, get all of them. down hills. Oh yeah. So a forty-five degree slope is a real hills. thing. They're a little dangerous. Oh, the yeah. hills are dangerous. That rolling yeah. down a hill is dangerous, and like I said, that's there. There's a whole. Wow, there's a whole deep – that rabbit hole is so deep. Um, we just know 45-degree slopes are, yeah. are a thing. Yes. Um, if you see people walking around the fair going, I'll explain that to you later on. Okay. That's, yeah. that's another okay. thing. Um, again, like I said, Sean, I don't know if he wanted to or not, but he got absorbed into our world. Yeah, we don't want words. Yeah, which which is which is a unique thing in of itself. Um, we did a festival and we wound up founding a nation because a young man was sitting talking to somebody and looked at them as seriously as he possibly could and said, "So, if you're from Norway, does that mean you're Norwegian?" <laughs> it's a laugh. And that's kind yeah. of what the rest of the group sitting around the campfire did. And then from that point on, it is that there's a nation called Norwegia, and and Sean is he's he's a member of the nation. So anyway, like I said, that's a whole other story right. for another time. Um, but anyway, <laughs> well, one of the questions is we want to know, and I know you and Sean are, are discussing it. Will be at the venue, however you do it, but will there be doing bagpipes from across the grounds? Can could you reiterate, uh, John? Sure. Uh, the question was, are you going to have dueling bagpipes on across from each other on the grounds? I'm not quite. I'm not quite sure. I have a feeling that's very likely. Uh, right. I also f find it likely that Sean and I will definitely want to like figure out some common tunes, maybe some learn some additional ones, and kind of coordinate a few. But mm -hmm. I definitely, I I foresee, especially the two of us. Good glory. Um, I, for, I foresee a lot, a fair degree of tomfoolery. Yeah. And that's, we're really hoping for that. I'm yeah. For that. yeah. It's, I, it's I, gonna, I would, gonna be personally, I would love to see one of you two screaming at the other one and then just start playing the pipes and just, you know, like you're going to have this big, massive brawl and then you just whip out the pipes and start playing the pipes. I, I just think that would be hilarious. 
what I think would be great, I'm definitely going to talk to Sean about this and see what he thinks, but um, there's a little trick I had done years ago with some buddies of mine at the Gale College where uh, we, we feigned some kind of an argument at, during the middle of this like student concert. And like, yo, you're you're playing my spot. You're playing my spot. And we're like, and then we're like, why don't we just share? <laughs> so <laughs> one of us just strikes strikes in the pipes and it sucks under. And I was talking about like get like the top hand and the bottom hand, that's where I broke it and the one that missed. So if we just go like this, like hand in hand, side by side, he say like one of us is operating and the other one just takes the bottom hand, pulls in the bottom, we play the same tune. <laughs> so it's like he's got the top hand, I got the bottom hand. <laughs> just see how it works out. It is a lot of fun. <laughs> it's oh, really goofy cool. and I can tell. Yeah, so like I it just that's the sort of goofy crap and thing is very plausible. Right. So I guess right. it's a fair warning early that you know. <laughs> so, so as the executive producer of this fair, I'm 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 letting you know right now that whatever you do is what you do and I'm not gonna tell you no. Nope. Um you know, so you guys have free reign. Um <laughs> what else you got? It's gonna be fun. Did you like the videos of you playing of your performance at MDRF? Apparently, they're on YouTube. At Maryland, I mean, I've seen a. I, I don't know. There's a lot of them. So, I mean, I yeah, I, I I've not, not really run into ones I really don't like. Um, there'll be the occasion where like pipes could have been closer, things like that. You know, things that I'll scrutinize because you know we're always our own worst critic. Um, but. Um, yeah, no, I, I mean, I've so seen. I, I, I've got a quick question for you. Um, yeah. So I'm going to preface this question with, with a very quick story. When I was younger, um, uh, a neighbor was a photographer, and he was uh, commissioned to um, uh, take pictures of the Guns N' Roses tour bus. So okay. they brought the tour bus into the neighborhood. Um, and, of course, all of us kids, we were Guns N' Roses fans. And we actually got to go onto the tour bus and it was great. And then my, my, my friend up the street, her dad, took all these great photos. But the one thing that I took away from it is kids being kids, getting into things we're not supposed to be. When we mm -hmm. got into the bus, they had their, all of their cassette tapes. They had their own music. And, and I know a lot of people are like, oh my God, they had their own music. What are they doing? They listen to their own music. But then it kind of like now me doing this sort of thing, I understand a little bit more why. So, yeah. so I guess my question would be, those guys were, were, you know, made music that they enjoyed hearing, where they put their own music on to listen to it. Do you yeah. do that? Do you find yourself doing that same thing? Do you find yourself, you know, creating music? Maybe you haven't played for anybody else, but you play, you come up with your own music, and then you just kind of, like, keep it on your private thing, and then you just go back and, like, Ooh. excuse me, you're like, wow, that was pretty cool, you know, and you just kind of, like, have your own playlist of your own music. It's more rare than I would prefer it to be, but uh, on occasion, yeah. Uh, it's, it's one of those things where um, you, like, people are just getting crazy experimental at a bar and they're trying to like make up their own cocktail. A lot of them are gonna be pretty god awful. And then you'll just nail one. And you, you can't even, ex you know, and that, of course, what I'm at, you nail one of those like, cocktails and be like, what the hell did I put in there? Oh, you know, and right. that's kind of almost as, apt of an analogy as it could possibly come up with where there'll be those yeah because I, I think you know again being self-critical is one thing that's that makes it tough um mm -hmm. one thing that's helpful for me on stage uh but it's 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 a blessing on some ways and it's a pain in the neck in other ways um when it comes to development for example it, whatever happens like during a performance or during any playing of anything I, I'm, I'm always like I've, over the years, I've got myself hyper focused on forward and next and forward and next to the point where I, I could have like really messed up something like I could have done a wrong movement, a wrong note or something. But I'm forging ahead by the time it, we've gotten done with playing or I've gotten done with playing something. I, I say I'll be because I, I take lessons still for competition stuff now with this wonderful woman named Leslie and so often I'll, I'll finish off a tune for her. And she'll say, so the D throw that you missed in part three. And I'm like, I, I did. She goes, yeah. And I'm like, well, I, I don't remember. <laughs> so I just have to take her word for it. I, it's gone. It's absolutely gone. And the same thing, we do something on stage and we were trying to like talk about where it got messed up. I was like, I don't remember. I just tell me what 
was wrong and I'll try to fix it for next time or, or whatever. Oh, yeah, it's a already. great thing on the moment because you can stay focused, but you're trying to hone something and improve something. And just so I, if, if I need to improve something, all my lessons with Leslie, beginning to end, verbatim, the whole thing is just recording the entire time. Um, any yeah. practice sessions where I'm trying to improve something, I have to record the whole damn thing and go back and listen again because I just will not remember um, at least enough of what's going to be needed right. to try and go and, and fix something. Um, so when I go to do that, the reason I brought that up is, of course, especially practice sessions, I go back to listen to it. What I'll end up doing, I'll listen to it, say, while I'm doing work the next day, uh, so work I don't have to pay attention to, and I'll be listening to that. I'll bookmark things that I know is going to be notable. Okay, I want to go back and listen to that and try and fix that, or this is a good piece. Um, it's torture. It's torture listening yep. to that because you're hearing every mistake and you're going to be self-critical. There will be those occasions, rare as they may be, where I'll be like, that came out pretty okay. And I, I, I'm not embarrassed to say, like, I'll uh, listen to it on repeat for hours, you know, and I'm like, whoa, that came out cool. Or like say the rare times that um, with the Kudu guys uh, when I when I was doing stuff with them, I didn't do a lot of the recordings, but it's some, um, and it was really tough process for me because just it's not a natural thing for me. What honestly, what more often than not happened was we'd get uh, tracks from the drummers, and um, wow. and I would try to like, get a, I'd try to think of a tune based on what's going on with the drums, and we might like t tweak the drums based on what I come up with the pipes with later, but the genesis of it really is coming from the percussion. Uh, so a lot of that, I can definitely say like any tunes I did come up with, I didn't really write it in a way because it never would have happened had the percussion not come to me, come up with that, go off of that. And that collaborative process got some, a couple of decent sounding tunes that I'm actually was quite happy with, but I also know full well that it wasn't fully right. me. All the same, I can go back to it. I listen up to an occasion and I'm like, I'm really proud of how that came out. You know, and yeah, and I'll be like, oh, I missed that, or oh, that could have been a lot better. And I'll, but I've learned to chuck some of that off mentally and just enjoy what came out, right. you know? And uh, so, yeah, um, it's, a, it's a rare when I can make mix a cocktail that it doesn't sound horrible, but right. when it does, I don't mind drinking it. It's okay. <laughs> that is, and I'm going to say this that is very, very cool. It's the first time I said that tonight. Um, all right, so we are actually out of time. Uh, Tara yeah. is the mind yeah. behind the camera. You know, she's, she's you know, flicking her wrist and everything. Like, ah, I get it, I get it, I get it. So, all right, anyway, um, I need you to hang on for me for a few more minutes. Yeah. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and get logged off. Um, again, Nate, thank you so yeah. much for coming on. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Thanks for having me. Uh, we have a bar uh, that is going to be there. Um, um, it, it's again Mounted Archery Highland Games. We have you um, and um, and Sean and Michelle Mountain. So um, anyway, with all that being said, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. We will see you again next week. Wow. Oh, okay. Um, no, don't don't hit that one. If you hit ends, you need to go to to Facebook in the corner where it says live. It says live on Facebook. I think you click right there. Stop live stream. Love production. <laughs>